I'd like to first start by acknowledging and supplementing the history that was talked about around this charter. I want to acknowledge that uh, Professor Mamukheti Pake, the former Vice Chancellor of the University of Cape Town, had in her engagements with colleagues from Bristol, engaged on the idea of partnerships that are life affirming, that allow equity, and that engender the work that we are discussing today. And it was through that partnership between Professor again in the University of Bristol, but through the intellectual brain trust of Professor Isabella, Professor Ulen Sakharo, Professor Isabella Abodiri, I hope I'm saying it properly, I apologize. Professor Divine Four, Professor Ulen Sakharo, assisted by the doctoral fellow within Bristol, that this has found some intellectual groundings that we invite you to join in us to engender. The second affirmation that I'd like to make is really to thank my own colleagues from the University of Bristol and also from the University of Cape Town, as well as the, 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 the foundation that is uh, supporting this uh, James Alexandrov. And Sue and, and Evelyn, I really appreciate that you created this process with us. I'd like to state that uh, partnerships are quite essential in the global arena, especially on research and gay scholarship, as well as impact. For universities are not just social institutions that produce knowledge. The knowledge they produce, the intellectuals they produce, participate in shaping economies, ecologies, infrastructures, and associated global, bilateral, and multilateral systems. And thus, the partnership that we should be creating must also be attentive to the contextual exigencies of the experiences of the people of the global south as they do of the global north and the agency within which they co-construct the knowledge systems, ontologies, but also the dignity that is required. Having experienced the aftermath of COVID-19, where the humanity was stratified, who was allowed to live and who was allowed to die, the charter comes at a point where we in university must be asking the question, for what purpose is the knowledge and the research and engagement that we are entwined with? How is Africa and the global north intersecting? And really appreciated that Bristol has been willing to engage so that these processes of reimagining knowledge systems and how they are beneficial to societies and the partnerships are equitable and the asymmetries that are shaped by the partnerships we have are overcome. So the charter serves as a guide that will assist us to rethink the practices that maintain the power imbalances and sometimes that create, as, as the previous speaker would have said, master servant ideas. But it says, how do we co-create, how do we include, how do we ensure that the criteria of partnership is enabled? Many international collaborative research frameworks are embedded in dishonest, sometimes neoliberal relationships that maintain colonial infrastructures of knowledge and sometimes a co-dependency, if not dependency, on the global North institutions. I'm appreciative that an institution, Bristol, and our partner in solidarity, the University of Toronto, are willing to rethink how these relationships can be based on equity, on partnership, on models where reciprocal dignity in the knowledge framing 
but also its output are pursued. And this is something that is commendable. The second aspect that I think is very important for us to acknowledge and to affirm is to ensure that the growth and development of academic research programs, that universities develop visions that promote scientific excellence and achievement that are bold, but also that have global impact. One of the esteemed scholars, African scholars, Adibaya Okoshi, reminds us in his article that these partnerships often involve African universities for basic research and not for complex research. And it's about time that we ensure that the frameworks and the conceptual framing of North, Global North, Global South partnerships enjoy connectedness where the framing overcome asymmetrical ways. And he says, it is imperative that the formulations of international research partnerships ensure that the functioning, the functional interpretation of the world or its analysis is attended by us all. That we do not undermine Africa's research communities and the scope for cross exchanges and the broader development debate or the questions that are relevant for imagining the future together. For when we have free collaboration in the expression of ideation, epistemologies, pedagogies, or even emancipatory practices, then these partnerships will not only be life affirming for humanity, but will be attentive to the ecological crisis and the climatic changes that we are attended to. So I would like to conclude by saying we're truly appreciative that this particular partnership and the charter that has and will be launched today really creates a model that we can all embed and embody in order that the knowledge systems are exciting. I finally want to say that it is very important that the success of the universities are not just uh, to doing research for its own sake, but also to ensuring that its utilitarian value in the world is beneficial for societies in the future. Thank you very much. I'm excited to be here. Professor Ivan Welch, the